But we see you guys coming in here real young, thinking you're tough and bad on the street, and you come in here, and they take advantage of you. You're the Congress, they take advantage of you, because you ain't nothing here. You ain't tough, you ain't bad, you don't scare nobody in here. People with life sentences, you don't scare them. When you come in here, you don't know nothing about nothing. We got different rules in here. So if somebody's out here speaking to you, I don't care who they are, you extend some courtesy and you follow them with your head and eyes. Do we understand that? Yes, sir. No way. We got to be out of our mind. We got 15 out here. You need to be 15 times as loud as me. Do we understand that? Yes, sir. Do we understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, Let me tell you something. You understand me? Keep your hands down by your side, young man. You Heels together. Me? I'm a realist. You know, I'm a realist. I'm, I'm, I'm not a dreamer. I, I realize if we had 15 kids coming in here, you know, the old adage, if, if, if you can just get to one, if you can get to one, and I, I think we are getting to more, but if you can just get to one to get out there and to have that respect for his mother and to love his family and truly prioritize the right way, truly put his mother and his guardians and his grandmother before his friends and the people who really, I don't feel, truly care about him. And, uh, I think that's important. I think if they can go away, and that's where it starts, because if you have three hours, three and a half hours, you're certainly not going to change somebody's totally completely around. All you can do is maybe grab him from going in the wrong direction and start pointing him in the right direction. And I think it starts with respect. I don't care if you're five years old or 100 years old. Everybody wants it, and I don't care who you are. You want respect, but if you're not out there giving it, you don't deserve it. It's not a one-way street. So a lot of us came from the same uh, background. We started off the same way, and we see these kids going through the things that we came through. A lot of our parents were dysfunctional, and the kids are crying out for help, and nobody's listening. Nobody knows what to listen for. They don't see the signs. It's up. Uh... I don't know. I don't. I know I don't want to be here. That's just about it. We see the youth coming in here at 16 with life sentences, and. That means that their life is over. And as a father myself, sometimes I see my children, because I have three sons and two daughters also. And when I look at these children that's coming through the system today, be it on tour or, or you know, incarceration, I see my children. And I really want to reach out to them because I've grown since my incarceration. And I really want to reach out and try to help them, you see? and it, it's really disturbing uh, to see the youth at this age fall victim to the vices that they're falling victim to. You know, they're not a fruit that has really fallen far from the tree. They are what this society is producing. So these kids coming through the system, it says something about society and its values today. And it's very scary. You know what it is to me now? You know what it is to me now? It's about giving you another chance at life. It's about making you understand that there's people out there, brother, that knows that pain and that hurt, that rebellion, whatever it is, making you do the things that you're doing, stop. Go to them counselors, go to your probation officers. You go to somebody out there that's telling you to stop doing whatever it is you're doing. You go to them and tell them. Tell them why. Tell them why you feel the way you do. And yeah, see, just because I'm in here, don't mean I don't know. I know where some of you come from, because that's where I come from. And that pain and that hurt, it don't go away. It don't go away when you, you got no right. You got no right to go out there and hurt innocent people in society because things went wrong in our life. It's, it's a tailor suit fit for each tour. And like, just say a tour comes in from Orlando. We try to bring guys from the compound that are from Orlando. And that way, they can speak about the same avenues like Mercy Drive in Orlando or some of the hot spots in Orlando. And when the guy speaks about a hot spot, they look up like, hey, they know this hot spot. They know what's going on. They know who the big boys are on the street or who want to be the big boys on the street. They've been there. They, they know what's going on. They've been there, and they're here in prison. So they can tell the kids how it is in prison, how they, can, how they got into it, under trouble, and how to get out of it. Turn it up! If you think you know something about weapons and you're a little farther than a shotgun can reach you, you're out of your mind because in that officer's left hand is AR-15. 
Same weapon as the M16 used by the military. I promise you, that weapon can reach out and kill you from 800 meters. And there will be nowhere in this compound you'll be 800 meters if you're trying to go over this fence from one tower to the next. Y'all just said the dangerous environment. The reason why it's a dangerous environment, because this is on my home. Some of us will never see the streets again. So my advice to you, man, pay attention to the man that's talking to you, because he might very well have something to keep you out of prison. Ain't no love showed to you in here. So don't think for one minute that this is still scrape, but because it's not. It's not a skill scrape. We're gonna take y'all in the dog, we're gonna let y'all see what we live like in there. 14 burgers. 14 burgers. A lot of y'all, when y'all tell me what y'all what brought y'all in here, you remind me of myself when I was y'all teenage. Because it wasn't too many years there after that I found myself in prison. I done been in prison long than y'all of y'all been living. You understand? I've been now 17 years, got a life sentence. Don't know when I'm going home. Ain't no love show to you in here, man. You understand? Trouble's easy to get into it, but it's hard to get out. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all make a U-turn in your life, man. Right in there. Keep it tight, too, man. Let's go. Let's go. Quick, please. You first sit. Come on out and get on this wall. Bring your in there. I want six of y'all to pull this wall up. Break it off and bring the rest around this wall now. All the way down this end. Do not let your back touch my wall. Face me, every one of them. Do you understand that? Yeah. I'm going to walk this line. I'm going to show you what happened to me six years ago. 16-year-old dude come through here, man. Look like a little girl. Can you see this? I was stabbed, man, six weeks later after he came on a compound. About four guys stabbed me in my face because of what I did to the guys that raped the little dude, man. 16 years old. For one, look pretty as you look, man. Stab right here in my eye. Can you see this? Eye. This is what a convict would kill another convict about, whatever the consequence be, because we don't steal from one another. Do you understand that? Yeah. Yeah. If y'all out there burglarizing any one home, man, think about what you're doing. If you don't end up dead, you are coming to prison one day. You understand? Yeah. For one, when you meet a convict, man, that think you hungry, he is going to politely, man, step to you, offer you something to eat. For one, y'all are so stuck on stupid till you think you know so much that you're going to accept something from a convict when you come to prison. Do you understand? Yeah. When you eat whatever belongs to the convict that you accept this for, man, you're not knowing the thoughts on his brains, man. Do you understand that? Yeah. For one, man, three, four, five days later, after you eat and get fat for how he wants you to get, he going to have you to pump yourself up, man, and not knowing one time what he is feeding you for. I'm going to show you whatever you're going to be wearing when you come to prison, which they call these chain gang g strings. Can you see these? This is what y'all would be wearing when you come to prison, when you get cleaned by a convict. When he pack your backside up, man, you will wear chain gang g strings. Do you understand that? Yeah. They will fit each and every one of you because they sell on the compound for whatever size you may need. Don't get in that blessing, man, because y'all got some serious crime, man. Come on, move out, move out. Y'all got some serious crime, man. Some of y'all got a blessing, man, after you just walk through this tour here, man, without coming to prison.